You would think a film with three of the most gorgeous people in Hollywood would be really good and I could find nothing wrong with the film. Well, you don't know who I am, because I am the nitpicker, Berryman, and this is 10 Thing Wrong With. Red Notice is a 2021 American action comedy film. It tells the story of an FBI agent who reluctantly teams up with a renowned art thief in order to catch an even more notorious criminal. When the film was released, it got generally mixed reviews from critics who praised performances along with the humour and cinematography, but criticised the plot and writing. However, what have I found wrong with this film? Well, join me as I discuss 10 things wrong with Red Notice. Number 10, acting. Now, surprisingly, I've just said in the intro that the critics thought the acting was good. I do not. Seriously, Ryan Reynolds looks like he was bored the whole film through. It didn't actually have like that Ryan Reynolds sarcasm. It, it, his performance was quite flat and dulled and mellowed out. My missus actually thought Ryan Reynolds was not actually doing anything different whatsoever, and she loves Ryan Reynolds. The Rock, same again. There was no The Rock charm or charisma, which is he's more famous for. That's why you watch a Rock film, because he's larger than life, and same again, he was a bit, you know, squashed in. Gal Gadot, on the other hand, I did enjoy her performance, and she actually gave the impression she was enjoying being in this film. But the actual on-screen acting, I wasn't really a fan of. Which is a shame, because I do like Ryan Reynolds. And I am a wrestling fan, so obviously I like The Rock. But yeah, their performances were not that good. Number nine, trying to be Raiders of the Lost Ark. My titles are normally a little bit more cryptic, but this one I've sort of given the whole thing away. But this film was trying to be Raiders of the Lost Ark. Hell, it has references to Raiders of the Lost Ark. But you know what this doesn't have? Raiders of the Lost Ark's guts. It doesn't have that oomph. Now, I know there's the whole thing that Indiana Jones didn't actually really do anything in Raiders of the Lost Ark, but that's not the point. It's still a fun, enjoyable film. It's a brilliant film, but this trying to copy and trying to do that archaeology, it's, no. I didn't enjoy that. In fact, I think that's one of the reasons why this film, I didn't really get behind. Number eight, Interpol. People probably know that Interpol is a real organization and their job is to provide information from one police department to another police department. They are the middle ground between countries and their law enforcement offices. They do not issue warrants for arrest and they do not have agents going out in the field to arrest people because they have no jurisdiction, none whatsoever. So why an Interpol agent is chasing these people around the world trying to arrest them is a complete load of rubbish. It doesn't, it's not true, it's unfactful, and uh, it just annoys the hell out of me. Interpol are just a full of pencil pushers sat in an office, end of. They don't chase people around the world. They will tell your government, this person's a wanted criminal and in your country. That's it. Number seven, Porsche. Julian Clark and Mike Sale are the film's editors, and I'll tell you something, they need to be commended for what they managed to achieve in this film in regards to the Porsche. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who is a big muscly fella, could not fit in the Porsche. Seriously, he struggled to get in and out. These two guys managed to edit this scene so well, so it looks like he gets in and out the Porsche, no trouble whatsoever but it didn't work. He had to maneuver him out. It took him about 20 minutes to get in the Porsche. They film his scenes, then it takes him about 20 minutes to get out of the Porsche. I mean, these editors, obviously, on a $200 million film, you want the best editors, and these two have managed to really pull that trick off. Number six, prison guards. In the prison that's run by Interpol, which it wouldn't be, because we've already established that, but there's a load of prison guards with jackets on it, and on the back of the jacket, it actually says O-M-O-H. 
Now that organization doesn't really exist and you think it was just made up, but it's not. There is in Russia a police department that has O-M-O-N on the back of it. So you think, oh, okay, so it is based on real prison guards. Well, no, those police officers are riot police. He would not be, you know, doing guard duty in a prison. They'd be out controlling riots. Something that apparently is quite common in Russia. But, yeah, facts, people. Get the facts right. Number five, wrong location. I've literally just said, get the facts right, people, and you still can't do it. This, this, there was no research done on this film. Now, when I say wrong location, what I mean is the clue to where all the German treasure is actually held. There's a bunch of coordinates. Now, I have done this before. I googled those coordinates and it's supposed to be in the middle of a jungle in Argentina. It's in the middle of a field in Brazil. You didn't even get the right country. Come on, it was not that hard. You just Google first, right. That's the middle of the jungle. What's the location? Bang. It's that simple, really simple. And it's like, what the, what the hell were you thinking? A middle of a jungle in Argentina to a middle of a field in Brazil. No, it's why? Number four, German boxes. So the vault that's full of German art that's apparently in Argentina, even though the location's in Brazil, is full of German boxes with English writing on it. Why would boxes, German art boxes have English on it? Wouldn't it have German on it? Now, before anyone says maybe they changed it because English is the local language, they're supposed to be in Argentina. The main primary language is Spanish and it has a secondary language. And that's not English either, that's Italian. Three different languages that you could have chose for and I wouldn't have said a single, actually I probably would if you said uh, Italian, but English? What the hell? Number three, cars. So same again, back in the German vault, there are these German cars, all World War II. Some of them vintage. They've been sat there for 70 years and look really good. Great. So how the hell do you start these cars with no issues? Have you ever left a car alone for a year? It doesn't work. For 70 years? No, I don't believe it. One turn of the crank, the car's running. Well, one, the petrol probably would have evaporated. The car would have seized up. And you've got two things. You've got those tanks as well, and they start up straight away, and they're a lot more industrial than the car. But also saying like that, those tanks would never catch up with the car in a million years. The car actually goes around about 70, 80 miles an hour, top speed. The tanks have a top speed of 56. Ooh, gone. And don't get me started on the waterfall because this is a bulletproof heavy car that is also a convertible. It would have sunk like a stone in the water. It wouldn't have just like bobbed along before sinking. It would have gone in that water, gone straight away. There is so much wrong with this film and I'm only touching the surface really. Number two, Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran, in some people's views, is a brilliant songwriter. I do like some of his songs, but not all of them. I'm not the world's biggest fan. So I get really fed up of seeing Ed Sheeran doing cameos in every single film possible. Why was he in this film? Why? <laughs> it's just, it, it didn't need to be there. It didn't enhance the plot. It did nothing for the plot. It was like, oh, here's Ed Sheeran. <laughs> what? Why? Number one, Red Notice. Do you know what? This is one thing I would love to see in Cinema Sings uh, videos. Because you know he always does Red Notice, or film title, roll credits. Well, that's exactly what happens in this film. So it, he would be happy with that. Red Notice, roll credit. Oh, it worked. Me, not on the other, not on your Nelly. So the film's called Red Notice. So you would expect this film to be about the Red Notice that these guys have got. No, they get the Red Notice in the final seconds of the film. It doesn't make sense. Why call the film Red Notice if you're not really gonna have the Red Notice in the film? Right at the very end, stamp, these people have a Red Notice. No, 
I want the red notice to be foremost up front, right at the beginning of the film, so we know what it's about. I know you gave us a description at the beginning of the film, saying it's the highest level that Interpol can give for an arrest warrant, but putting it, these people getting it right at the very end? No. <laughs> no. Final thoughts. As you may have noticed, this film has some major, major flaws in this film. And some of it, I haven't actually put in this list. Bizarrely enough, I'm actually going well against the critics this week. Some of the things that they've said was great, the acting. Well, I've already put that as a point in this video. The cinematography, no. The cinematography was awful. Hell, I know this was filmed in the pandemic. But the green screen effects, yes, these are green screen effects. They're not on location. They are actually green screen effects so often and so bad. The set design looks like it's on a set. It's not what you want in a film. I have said this plenty of time. When I watch a film, I want to be immersed. I want to be taken away. I want to be feel like I am there in this film. And I did not get that impression from this film. The humor... Hell, I've said it to you guys before, I have a childish sense of humour and I didn't really find this film that funny. In fact, I found it dull, boring, I struggled to stay awake. Now, my missus is a Ryan Reynolds fan and she loves this film, but me, personally, who can get into anything, I just felt it was a r bad rip-off, I just felt it was dull and boring and didn't really take me for a ride. Now, that being said, I did love the twist ending of this film. I'm not gonna spoil it here, even though I do do that, but this film has a brilliant twist, and that's the only thing this film is good for. So if you ever do watch this film, just grin and bear it right to the end of this film for the twist, because it does make up for it. But $200 million on this film, granted 60 million of that was actually for the three main cast. Oh, kudos for actually having the three main cast members being paid equal amounts. Great idea for that one, especially in this day and age. But so that left, what, 140 million on everything else? And you don't get the impression you're watching a film that cost 140 million to actually make. It's, yeah, it's probably one I won't ever watch again. Hmm. So what am I going to rank it? Well, as I said, because of the twist ending, and I'm going to give the phrase for the equal pay, but other than that, everything else is boring. Facts are just so badly wrong. I didn't guess into this film, and I'm going to be really horrible this week. Three. Three out of ten berries. I haven't given it a score that low. Hell, if it didn't have the, te uh, the twist ending, it might have been even lower, but there we go. But that's what I think. What do you think? Did you enjoy this film? Did you hate this film? Am I being a bit OTT horrible on this film? Because I know my missus is gonna say I am. Let me know in the comments below. On to next week. Well, do you know what? We've done one Netflix film. Should we do another Netflix film that's apparently a little bit more scary? Let's do that, shall we? Wanna know what I mean? Come back next Sunday. Other than that, I will see you then. Take care, bye-bye.